Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Ephesians 4, 32. Good morning, friends. Happy to see you today. Have you ever been hungry or thirsty? Well, today we're gonna to talk about a different type of hunger and thirst. Jesus says that he wants us to hunger and thirst for righteousness. That means he wants us to be hungry and thirsty to do the right thing. So today Douglas is gonna to talk to us about what it means to hunger and thirst for righteousness. Let's watch and see what he has to say today. This video is gonna have like the longest title ever. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas. And today we're gonna to be talking about the Beatitudes some more. Yeah, and the one that we're looking at today is found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. And it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Now again, like all of these Beatitudes are talking about, Jesus is talking about people who seem really unfortunate, but are actually very blessed. And I don't really know anybody who likes being hungry, right? That's not like a good thing to be. Nobody likes being hungry. In fact, it's a very good thing to help people who are hungry. You know, there are people all over the world who don't have enough to eat and, and it's good for us to do what we can to help them to get the food that they need. People who are hungry are, are usually thought of as being very unfortunate. And Jesus isn't talking here about being hungry for food, although he does say something pretty similar to that in the book of Luke. But he, he's saying that blessed are you if you are so wanting to be righteous, if you are so wanting to do what is good that it hurts. It hurts in the same way that it, that that it hurts when you're hungry. And that word righteousness, it just means it just means doing what is right. And so, if you're hungry and thirsty for righteousness, you're you are hungry and thirsty for wanting to do the right thing. You know, there was this one time where uh, I was running late for school, so I didn't get to have breakfast, and I was also running so late that I forgot to grab my lunch, and uh, I didn't even have my little card with me. You know, my mom usually sends with me in case I forget my lunch so I can get something from the cafeteria, but I, I forgot that little card too. So, so I didn't have any breakfast, and then I didn't have any lunch at school, and then I had soccer practice right after school, and so I was taking the whole day with no food. Now, some people go even more than a day, but for me, even just skipping two meals made me feel uncomfortable. Now, some people, again, are in really, really bad situations where they go days and days without food, but all day I was just thinking, oh, I just want some spaghetti, just specifically. I wanted spaghetti really bad. And just spaghetti, spaghetti, spaghetti. All day I'm thinking I want some spaghetti, and my stomach is hurting, and, and uh, you know, it was really uncomfortable. But when I got home, there was a big old plate of spaghetti waiting for me. And so I'm hungry for spaghetti all day, and then at the end of the day, turns out, that's what I get. I get the spaghetti and I was so happy and I ate so much. It was, it was, it was very satisfying. It was very good. Now the whole day at school, you know, if you could hear my tummy rumbling or if you knew that I was super hungry, you wouldn't think to yourself, oh, Douglas is super lucky. I want to be just like Douglas. He's so hungry. You might say I was lucky. You might say I was blessed if you knew what was coming, if you knew that I was going to get some spaghetti at the end of the day. But just that feeling of being hungry, that's, that's something that most people, you know, spend a good portion of their day trying to avoid. Now, if you are a Christian, that pretty much means that you want to be like Jesus, right? That's, that's pretty much what a Christian means, someone who is following Christ, someone who is trying to be Christ-like. And man, when I look at the example that Jesus set for us, 
you know, the way that he loved people who seemed unlovable, the way that he that he stood up for what was right, the way that he he did what he was supposed to do and did not do what he was not supposed to do. Man, he he is the only one who has never ever ever sinned. He set an amazing example for us. But but that example that he set for us and and the call that he has given to each of us to do what is right, that can be kind of intimidating sometimes and even uncomfortable. Because if you say, "Yeah, I want to do what's right," and then you mess up, that's a really, really uncomfortable feeling. I, I know I get very embarrassed when I do something that I know is wrong. Maybe not in that second do I feel embarrassed, but, but as soon as I realize what I did, it's a very uncomfortable feeling. And some people, when they get that uncomfortable feeling, they, they try to, you know, just, just explain it away or ignore what they're feeling. You know, ignore that tugging of the Holy Spirit saying that what you did was wrong. And they say, well, I can't be just like Jesus. Jesus is God, right? I can't do what he did. And so maybe it's okay for me to just mess up sometimes, so I'm not even going to try. But I think here when Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. I think that when he says that, he's saying that it's good to feel a little uncomfortable. It's good to feel bad when we do what's wrong. Now, again, I don't think God wants us to just give up and be like, oh, I messed up. I'm the worst ever. No, I think he's saying that, that when we mess up, we should allow ourselves to feel bad for what we've done and try to do better next time. We're supposed to try so hard that it kind of hurts. You know what I mean? It hurts in the same way that your stomach hurts when you're hungry. And so my challenge to you guys today is that you would hunger and thirst for righteousness. That you would that you would want to do what is right so bad that it, it kind of hurts a little bit. And that you'll keep trying and keep trying even when you mess up. Because if your goal is to do what is right, if your goal is to be righteous and be like Jesus Christ, if you want that so bad that it hurts, Jesus says that you are blessed because you will achieve your goal. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. It might be a long time. But if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, then you will be filled. Being righteous is something that people work on all their lives. It's a struggle sometimes to find the things in our lives that we need to make better. The sin that our lives have that God wants us to work on. So ask God to show you the things that he wants you to work on because he will friends. And that's our job is to hunger and thirst to be more like him. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for these wonderful children. And thank you for the hunger and thirst that you give us to be more like you. We love you, Lord. Help us to see the things in our lives that we should change. In your name I pray. Amen. All right, my friends, stay tuned for our mystery picture of the day. See if you can figure out what it is. Bye. See you next time.